Okay, in this video, we're going to calculate the empirical formula and the molecular formula from percent mass uh, data. So <clears throat> let's say that you're hiking along on the surface of Mars and you pick up a rock and you want to know what it is. So what you do is you crush it up and you put it in your mass spectrometer and what pops out on the other end is mass percentage data. So in this particular instance, we end up with a sample that is, um, uh, whoops, that is 47.08% uh, carbon by mass, uh, 6.5% nine percent hydrogen and forty six point three three percent chlorine now we have this sample oh and there's one other thing I almost forgot alright so we know the percentage of the three elements that are in the stone uh, we've got uh, uh, carbon hydrogen and chlorine in it and then the other th thing that uh, I don't want to forget is we also, uh, from the instrument, the mass spectrometer, we know the uh, molar mass of the actual chemical compound. We, we don't know what it is, but we know what its mass is. All right, so I'm going to write that over here. Now, the question is, how do we get from percent mass to the empirical formula and how do we get from the empirical formula to the actual identity of the compound so the trick with this is is that um, we we need to figure out a way of getting the percentages into masses because what we want to be able to do is get them take the mass of each of these elements convert it into moles and then find the mole ratio uh, which is the empirical formula, the, the ratio in which these elements are actually combined. So the easiest way to do that is to assume that we have a total of 100 grams of the rock. And what that allows us to do is to convert directly from percentage into mass. It's, this is the easiest way to do it. So with that thinking then, what that means is that we're going to have 47.08 grams of carbon. We're going to have 6.59 grams of uh, hydrogen. And we're going to have 46.33 grams of the chlorine. Now what we need to do is to convert each of these mass amounts into moles. And you'll notice the way I'm doing the calculation is that I, I'm running this in a stack so that um, the, the carbon calculation is being done on top of the hydrogen calculation which is being done on top of the chlorine. And The reason I do it this way is I want to be able to see the end result when I finally see the ratio. I want to have that ratio literally right in front of me instead of being spread around on the paper. So I'm going to run my calculation simultaneously and one calculation on top of the previous calculation. All right. So in order to get to moles from mass, we need to divide by the molar mass. And so we're going to be dividing the 47.08 grams of carbon by 12.01 grams per mole. And we're going to be dividing the hydrogen by 1.008 grams per mole. And we'll be dividing the chlorine by 35.45 grams per mole. And these numbers, of course, they're being taken from the periodic table that I have displayed at the bottom of the screen. It's probably best if you're following along with the calculator as we do this. Now, for the carbon, we're going to end up with 3.9. And what I recommend in problems like this is you carry your numbers out. You don't want to do any rounding. And I recommend at least um, seven, six or seven decimal places at a minimum. 
and the reason for this is because in a minute you'll see we're going to be looking for a whole number and if you're rounding uh, if you're rounding these things off then I can get almost guarantee you you're not going to end up with whole numbers so you want to avoid the rounding carry the numbers out like I am alright let's see for the hydrogen it's going to be uh, 6.5 6.53 Let's see, I can probably make that a little bit more clear. Let me just fix this quick. Here we go. Okay, that's much better. And that's moles of hydrogen. All right, and then we just have the chlorine left. Okay, so we have 3.9. 3.920066 moles of carbon. We have about 6.5 moles of hydrogen and about 1.3 moles of chlorine. All right, so now at this point, when we have the moles of each of the elements that make up this rock that we found, what we want to do is identify which of these three values is the smallest. And you can see from the numbers that it happens to be the chlorine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that smallest value and we're going to use it to divide all of the other values including itself so I'll start by rewriting it for the chlorine and what I'm gonna do is just go 1.3 and then dot 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 to make life easier right so this is what we're dividing by we'll carry and you want to carry all the numbers out on your calculator when you do this so we're dividing each of the mole values by the smallest value that we get and if we were careful, what we should get out on the other end of this should be numbers that are very close to whole numbers. And we see for carbon we get 2.999. And, and this is a whole number ratio. The units have actually canceled out. So it's literally a number. And it's going to be the subscript that defines the mole ratio of carbon in the empirical formula. We see for hydrogen, it's almost exactly 5, so it's 5.002 for the hydrogen. And for the oxygen, it's, it's 1. All right, I mean, excuse me, for the chlorine, it's 1. All right, so now we can write the empirical formula for this. It's going to be C3 H5. CL. Okay, and I'll set this equal to EF, short for empirical formula. Okay, so now what we know from this then is that this rock that we found and we ground up and, and we did an elemental analysis to determine what elements were in it and what the mole ratio was. So the empirical formula is C3H5Cl. Now what we need to know is how or what the molecular formula is. And so how do we get from here to the molecular formula? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a ratio. And the ratio is going to be the molar mass of the molecular formula, which I'm going to abbreviate as MF, divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Okay, and this should give us a whole number. And what we're going to do with this whole number is we're going to multiply it through the empirical formula. 
All right. So the piece of information we're missing here is the molar mass of the empirical formula. We need to calculate that, and we're going to do that in a second. I just want to draw your attention up here to the upper right-hand part of the video and remind you that the molar mass of the MF is here. This is where, at the beginning of the video, I said I was going to put that. So there's that number. All right. So how do we find the molar mass of the empirical formula? All right, so there's three carbons, so it's going to be 3 times 12.01 plus 5, since there's 5 hydrogens, times 1.008. And that's going to be added to the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.45. The grand total should be 76. 0.52 grams per mole. Right? So now we've got the uh, molar mass of the empirical formula and we, we're ready to take our ratio. So um, I'll do that here. So our ratio is going to be 153 divided by 76.52 the, the crude number we get is going to be 1.999. I'm only writing this to make a point that almost always you're going to have to do a little bit of rounding here. You just want to be careful about how you do it. And, and in this case, there should be no question that the whole number that we're after is 2. So what we're going to do with this number now is we're going to multiply it through the empirical formula. I'm going to change the color of this so it's it's obvious. We're going to take the 2 and we're going to multiply that through the, the empirical formula. I'll rewrite that so it's C3H5Cl. And the 2 is multiplying the subscripts. So the actual formula, the molecular formula of the unknown, is going to be C6H10Cl. Two. All right, I'm going to circle that. Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to draw a, a structural formula that would be one possible one possibility for the actual um, structural formula of the compound. It might look like this. This would be one possibility. And uh, actually, I, let me modify this a little bit. I need to pull this out of here. Okay. Now, okay. So this is one possibility. All right, and just let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we've got, here's the two chlorines. At each of these corners, there's a carbon. Each corner, there's a carbon. So if you count them, you see that we've got a total of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And there's two chlorines, so that's taken care of itself. Now let's figure the hydrogens out. All right, on each of these C's, there's going to be two hydrogens. Like this. All right, now let's count and see where we're at. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six. That's eight total hydrogens, and it would seem that we're missing two, but we're actually not, because there's a, car there's a, a hydrogen off of this carbon and there's a hydrogen off of this carbon. That's a total of 10. So this structure right here that I drew, we call it a structural diagram. All right, I'm going to label that structural diagram is one possible solution to 